Hello. This is going to be our last look at transistors. So far we've looked at a single transistor, which gave us the inversion function. We also looked at two transistors arranged in series, which gave us the NAND function, and two transistors in parallel, which gave us the NOR function. Once you start having more than two transistors, the number of possible arrangements becomes very large very quickly. But all of those ways of arranging them build on the three methods of a single transistor for inversion, transistors in parallel for the NOR function, and in series for the NAND function. So I'm going to look at a circuit which combines those um, three methods together. The function we're going to look at is the exclusive OR function, uh, which will be useful for when we look at arithmetic, which we'll be doing next. So here's the circuit. It's going to look a lot more complex than anything we've seen before, but it is stuff we've just seen before. So to begin with, just uh, look at the little table which summarises its behaviour. The exclusive OR function, you get a high out when either X is high or Y is high, but not both. So let's just see it in action first. Um, when X is low, Y is low, our output is low, which is this line here. When X is low and Y is high, we have a high output. And when X is high and Y is low, we have a high output. And when X is high and Y is high, we have a low output. There are several ways this could have been implemented. Um, the way I've chosen uh, is to have part of the circuit recognising when both of the inputs are low, and another part of the circuit recognising when both of the inputs are high. So let's break it down and see what's happening. This transistor is acting as a single transistor, it's acting as an inverter, and it's inverting the what x input. So when x is high, not x is low, and when x is low, not x is high. This transistor is inverting the Y input. So when Y is high, not Y is low. And when Y is low, not Y is high. This pair of transistors is in series, so it's acting as the NAND function. The current will flow down here only when the inputs to these two transistors are both high. So it's when not X is high, not y is high, which means that x and y are both low. But when current is flowing through here, it's flowing through this resistor, which means you have a voltage drop across that resistor and the output is low. So this pair of transistors is recognising this line here, when both x and y are low. This pair of transistors is also in series. Current will only flow through here if both of their inputs are high, which is when X is high and Y is high. So when current is flowing through these resistors, the transistors, it must be flowing through this resistor, so we get a voltage drop and our output is low. So it's recognising this line here, where both X is high and Y is high. And this pair of transistors is in parallel with this pair of transistors. Current can flow through either of those. If current is flowing through either of those, it's flowing through here, and we get our voltage drop and our output um, goes to zero. But because these are in parallel, they're giving us the OR function, which is why we can have two um, entries in our output column, um, which are low. When X and Y are different, um, either way around, Neither of these pairs of transistors um, provides a through path for the current, so no current flows and that output is high. So from now on, we're going to assume we've got our transistor circuits and we're going to deal only with logic functions from now on, so moving to a higher level abstraction. And the next thing to look at is numbers and how we add them.